Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart in the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I am so glad that you have chosen to worship with us through this virtual experience on this Easter Sunday. It is a joy to be with you as we together celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. You will notice that we are in our historical sanctuary where it has been adorned with the wonderful, beautiful hydrangeas that you donated. And we ask you to extend your thanks to all who gave these gifts and especially to Sam Waldrop and to Kathy Wright, who used them to adorn our sanctuary today for this service. I hope that you will share in the joy and the triumphant victory of Christ over the grave as we worship together today. Let us worship the Lord. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia!
please join me in today's opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection may, by the renewing of your spirit, arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our God is the true and living God, worthy to receive glory and, and honor and power. God created all things. By God's will, they existed and were created. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All things came into being through him. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Being in the form of God, he emptied himself. He took the form of a slave and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. God also highly exalted Jesus. God gave him the name that is above every name. God has put all things under his feet. God made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. We believe that Jesus died and rose again through Jesus, God will bring with him all those who have died. As all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory.
Our lesson this morning comes from the 16th chapter of Mark, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. That, my friends, is no way to end a story. The principal characters flee from the scene. They are seized with such fear and terror that they defy the instructions of angels and they fail to tell the great good news of Easter. That, however, is exactly how the Gospel of Mark originally ended. It's uncomfortable, isn't it? It leaves us wondering about all of those stories we have heard about Easter morning. The silence of the women has evoked discomfort in every generation. In fact, it was probably that discomfort that led to the creation of not one, but two different endings to the Gospel of Mark. But our text on this Easter morning leaves us with these women who were silenced by amazement and by fear. The text leaves us with the vision of an empty tomb filled with the message of an angel that God intended to be told. And what a message. Do not be alarmed. You know, angels are always saying things like that, aren't they? Things like, do not be afraid. We heard those words as Gabriel greeted Mary on the day of the Annunciation. We heard it when the angels sang to the shepherds on the hillsides outside Bethlehem when Jesus was born. Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. The angel reaffirmed for the three women that the crucifixion was real. Clearly, he did not want them to leave that tomb thinking, well, maybe we just had a terrible nightmare. And, and the reality is that he never really died at all. No, he was crucified. Look, there is the place where they laid him. He was dead and he was buried here. He has been raised. He is no longer dead. He has been raised by the God who gives life. He is not here. He was here, but he has left the tomb. 
He has gone ahead of you to Galilee, just as he said he would. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. I think that Mark wrote what seems to be an unfinished narrative of Easter for a reason. I think that this uncomfortable ending has a message for the followers of Jesus in every generation. A message that often may be overwhelmed by the resurrection appearances that we hear in other Gospels. It's a message that needs to be heard in the church today. The Jesus story doesn't end at the empty tomb. This is not a historical moment that we can research and document in ways that are so familiar to us now. If you have been watching CNN series titled Lincoln, you know that even in the late 1800s, we were photographing and recording dates and events and collecting eyewitness accounts of all that happened in the time of the presidency of Lincoln and even before. The resurrection is not the end of a historical event. In fact, the empty tomb that we celebrate really isn't all that important. <laughs> the truth is, we don't know where it is for sure. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre may be the closest marking of the spot where Jesus was crucified and then interred very near. But for many years, other places were also identified as the crucifixion and burial place of Jesus. A hill that took on the shape of a skull, a garden where ancient graves were documented to be from the date and time of the life of Jesus. But it doesn't really matter because Jesus does not go back to the tomb, ever. He left it and he will never go back. Death cannot hold him. He is alive. The empty tomb is not the end of the Jesus story. It continues, according to the angel, in Galilee. I recently listened to a sermon by Bishop Will Willimon in which he reminded the flock that Jesus did not go where one might expect him to go after his resurrection. One might have expected him to go to the temple to show himself to those religious leaders who had handed him over for crucifixion. One might have thought that he would go there to the temple to establish his authority and his reign or that maybe he would have gone to the halls of government that executed him to declare that he was alive. Instead, Jesus goes to Galilee. He goes to that region where he first began his ministry, to that place where he called his disciples, where he taught his disciples and those who would listen from the hillside where he walked on water and healed the sick. He went to the places where he had lived with his disciples and among the people where his disciples had learned to know their teacher as the Messiah of God. He went before them to the familiar places of their lives. Mark's gospel teaches us that Jesus was never confined by an empty tomb or a temple or a church building 
or in the construction of religion or government, but that he lives in the Galilees of our lives. You don't have to seek him on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. You don't have to worry about discovering him at the location of the empty tomb. You don't even have to document or understand how this whole thing happened. Mark invites us to seek Jesus in the places where we live, the places where we work. He invites us to seek Jesus within our families, within our communities, and within this wonderful, wide, and beautiful world that God has made. Oh, Mark crafted his sermon well. The angel told the women, He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. He wanted his readers to remember what he had already written. That Jesus had told them that he would die, that he would be raised from the dead, and that he would go before them to Galilee. Mark wanted his readers to comprehend that none of this was an unexpected turn of events. He wanted his readers to get the very message of the angel that we will not discover Christ among the dead. We will discover him among the living in the places where we live. Do you remember the words to that old hymn, He Lives? I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living whatever foes may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. And all the world around me, I see His loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of His appearing will come at last. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good, and kind. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, went to look for Jesus in the graveyard. What they discovered was that He was not there. He had been raised from the dead. He left the tomb and He never looked back. He is not waiting for us in Jerusalem. He is watching for us right here, right now, in the places we live. He yearns for us to seek Him, not in a distant time, in a distant place, but in our time, in our place. For the Jesus story did not end at an empty tomb near Golgotha. The Jesus story continues in disciples like you and me who seek to know Jesus among the living. Disciples who yearn to take the next faithful step with the risen Christ in this moment, in this day, in this time. The Jesus story continues in disciples who know the truth of Mark's narrative. He lives. He is not dead. And he is still calling disciples to join him in God's mission of transforming the world. It is a mission of mercy, of grace, Love, compassion, 
kindness, generosity, healing, wholeness, joy, justice, peace, and hope. My friends, the risen Christ is just who the world needs today. Thank God for Easter. He lives. Hallelujah. He lives. We go now to tell the story. Amen and amen. Let us pray together. Holy God, we pray that you would continue the Jesus story in us, that you would fill our lives with his life so that as we continue our journey of discipleship, we will tell his story of love, compassion, justice, peace, and that we might be signs of hope living in the world. We thank you for sending Jesus to us. We thank you that he is going now before us and to all the places we live and that he is watching for us, just waiting for us to take one faithful step towards him. And now, O oh God, we ask you to accept our Easter prayers of thanksgiving for the joy, the beauty, and the holiness of this day. Amen and amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Dear friends, it's Easter. We have a message, a message that God wants us to share. He is alive. He has gone before us in all the places we live. Let us, as faithful disciples, take the next step in following Christ. Let us continue the Jesus story in love, in grace, in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.